Hey programmers, let's take a look at Heroku and the Phoenix framework. How do we deploy Heroku and the Phoenix framework together? So let's take a look at Phoenix. We have our app from last time. We created this application, a blogging app, just a real quick skeleton from our last video. Phoenix is gonna be just our API and we're gonna use Vue or Ember on the front end. So let's see if we can get this back end up on Heroku. So if you go to heroku.com, you can go ahead and sign up for account. They have a number of free tiers, so it's really easy to use. And you can just set up your website for free just to see how it works. And then you can pay money if you decide to grow it and get bigger. That's just through heroku.com, you can see right here. And for to get it working with Phoenix, there is an official guide, I'll include it in the show notes below, of how to do this. We're going to make a few changes because we don't, we're not using any static assets for Phoenix. We're using it can just completely as an API. We're not using Brunch or anything like that. Brunch is something that Phoenix uses if you're using it for the front end and the back end. So, but we're not going to worry about that. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is you need to install the Heroku build tools. So there's, a, there's some directions if you go Heroku build tools. Just Google it. You can look at the Heroku CLI. It tells you if you're on Mac, you do brew install Heroku. If you're on Debian um, or Ubuntu, you can add a repository and install it. And it also works for Windows Bash too, by the way, which is nice. So I already have it installed and I'm already logged in by the way. So if you go Heroku login, then it'll ask you for your credentials and login, but I'm already logged in, so that's fine. So I'm already, so I'm starting off in the app directory. So this is just the root directory. And I'm gonna have to type these commands in. And like I said, all these commands will be in the show notes. So first we need to do is make sure that we have, first thing we need to do is make sure that we have a, a Git repository set up. So to do that, you would type in git init. I'm not gonna type it, I hit enter here because we already have it. And then you hit git add, and that'll add all the files, and then we'll do git commit. And we'll just do this first on our initial commit. And I don't have anything changed, but if I didn't have this repository added, it would go ahead and just commit it. We need to run Heroku create. So I'm gonna copy and paste the command here. So you can see here it's Heroku create dash dash build pack and then you put in the name of the build pack and this is the github.com slash hash nuke Heroku build pack elixir dot git. And this is the build pack for elixir, which of course, as you know, which is Phoenix is built upon. And right here, it'll go ahead and give you where the build pack um, website is. It just created for you. So you wanna make sure you copy that and save it somewhere. So we'll just go ahead and save it here and the next thing we want to do is we're going to use an add-on. So by convention, by default, uh, Phoenix uses Postgres, so we're going to use that. So we need to run this command. So this is Heroku add-ons, and it's create Heroku Postgres SQL hobby dev, and we hit enter there. And since this database is empty, if upgrade you can transfer and went ahead and created the Postgres SQL database as the database URL, which is great. And at this point, if we had some static assets, if we were doing some stuff in here, you can see they're here in Atom. This is just default. If we were actually creating a website inside here, not just the API, then we would want to install the assets. And if you look at the official uh, documentation, excuse me, you can see here, if you have static assets, successful deployment, there's this build back here, build pack here, which is called Heroku build pack Phoenix static .git. But we're gonna skip that part right now. And what we need to do is we need to run a few more commands. So we're gonna config it. We're gonna set the pool size as 18. And that's just um, way, that's the recommended configuration. They put in the directions here. And then we're going to generate a secret file. So if you look at the config prod.exs file, 
you can see here at the bottom, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's an import underscore config, and it's pulling in this secret file, and I'll, I'll show it to you. And there's this secret key base, and so it's pulling in all this file, and if you look at your git ignore, and if you remember git ignore is the file that is in your root folder of your project that gets automatically created when you create a new Phoenix application, and that just tells git which files not to upload to the repository. So if you look at git ignore, it always excludes that file because this has your configuration for your database and things that you wouldn't want other people to know. So obviously your username and password, I'm just using default everything here, so I don't mind showing you guys. And then the secret key here. So we need to tell Heroku what our secret key is. So we'll instead we could use this one, but we'll go ahead and just generate it. So we'll do mix phoenix.gen.secret. And that'll create a secret key. So we'll go ahead and copy it. And then we'll run this command, which is Heroku config set secret key base. And we'll paste it. OK, it's added. And now we're going to go ahead and make some changes to that actual application. So we obviously need first, we need to go ahead and comment out where it shows, shows the import config right here. So we're not going to import in that secret config because it's going to be ignored by Git. And we need to make some changes over here. So instead of having HTTP port, system port, we're going to leave, actually, we're going to leave that the same. But for the URL, we're going to add a scheme. And we're going to use, basically, we want to make sure we're using SSL, HTTPS. So it's going to scheme HTTPS. And this host right here, remember that, that, remember that file we had earlier? The, let's see here, this hidden tundra. So we want to make sure we take this hidden tundra and add it in here. Hidden tundra and eight nine three four zero. You don't need to add the dot Heroku app dot com. That's fine. And we're since we're using SSL and HTTPS, we're going to use four forty three here. We don't have any static manifest files, so make sure you delete that. This is something that's different than in the official ins instructions. It wants you to keep it if you. Are using this as just an API like I am, you don't need it. So we're going to delete that. And we're going to add two more lines here. I'm just going to copy and paste them to make it a little quicker. And you can see here, this is the secret key we, we said before. Remember, we set that secret key in the environment in Heroku. So here it is, secret key base. So there it is. And this, just told, this is just an option we have to do for SSL to put rewrite on. So that's pretty much it for this blog endpoint. And we have one more config. Now right here, if you look in the prod secret, we have all the information for our repo, which is our, our database. So we need to add that in here. So I'm gonna, once again, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. So we're saying here to use the adapter Postgres, the database URL is already set for us when we used when we created the database and when we can't really see it here, but when we set the database, it automatically created it. So we won't worry about that. And it always says to take the pool size, be careful with it. Um, we think we set it for 18, but if it wasn't there, put it to 10 and then of course SSL true. So we're gonna go ahead and save that. So we commented out the bottom. We changed this, this endpoint for the blog and we added in the database stuff. And so another thing we have to do, it recommends to go to web channel user socket and where it shows transports here is put to timeout 45,000 or 45 underscore zero zero zero. I right here, you can see here, finally we have to decrease the timeout for the web socket transport in. This ensures that any idle connection are closed by Phoenix before they reach Heroku's 55 second timeout window. So that's just another thing we have to do. Uh, another thing we have to do, and this is a lot of stuff here, but it's not too bad. Uh, we have to click, uh, we have to create a new file. 
So let's go new file. We'll call it proc file. And this is uh, just something that you can see here. Um, this is just something that Heroku wants you to do. So this tells it basically we're going to use this is going to be used as in, as if it was run in production. It's going to run mix Phoenix server just as we did when we're run, running it locally. And you can see here proc file tells you a little bit about proc file is a mechanism for declaring what commands are run by application dynos in the Heroku platform. It follows the process model. So we just got to make sure we have that in there. And so let's take a look here. Um, let's go ahead and we made the changes to all these files. They're all saved. And let's go ahead and push it up to Heroku. So I'll first add it. I'm going to commit it. And then I'm going to go git push Heroku master. And now what this is doing is it's sending out this this whole application up to Heroku so we can then pull it up on our and our website here and it's getting it's fetching all the dependencies everything from hexa that it needs it's compiling everything so this will just take a minute Okay, great. I'm back. Got everything done here. It's all uploaded. So let's go ahead and see if it works. So I'm going to bring up the new tab here. I just copy and pasted this in here. So if I just bring it up, I have nothing in the main page. But if I go to slash app slash posts, or excuse me, API slash posts, I get internal server error. So obviously it's not working, and that's because I forgot one step here. So we have to actually run the migration because we don't actually have the tables yet in our Postgres database. So to do that, you can run Heroku run. And it always recommends you put in this pool size equals two before you're running any commands through Heroku to the Phoenix server. Uh, then we can do mix ecto migrate. So let's see if that works. Just take a second. Okay, I went ahead and created it. So we can take a look here. All right, so now we're seeing a JSON API version 1.0, but there's no data. So we can also run, we created a seeds file in the last video that just had one post in it. So we can just make sure it's working. We should have one post show up. So instead of mix ecto rec, Ecto migrate, we're gonna go mix run prive repo seeds dot access. Let's see if it runs. Okay, great. It looks like it's seeded the database. If you get an error at this point, you may want to double check to make sure that you didn't include any static files or you're trying to put the static pack in or you had that line right here. I had that problem once where I accidentally forgot to take this line out and was looking for some static files and it wouldn't run this seeds file. But let's see if it worked. Okay, there it is. So we see here, and by the way, I'm using a Chrome plugin to make this look pretty, this JSON. But I have our JSON API and then here is the test post. So our API is working. Obviously, it's very simple right now, but it should do quite a bit. Thank you for watching. This is how you take your Phoenix application and upload it to Heroku. I'll have some notes in the comments below, in the notes below. And please, if you like this video, clips, click subscribe. I'm going to be doing more Phoenix videos, more view videos, more Ember.js videos, more top 10 videos. So just stay tuned. Thank you and have a great day.